Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the DCM Sriram Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Rangnekar of CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Darwin. Good afternoon and welcome to DCM Shiram Limited's quarter three FI24 earnings conference call. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Shiram, Chairman and Senior Managing Director, Mr. Vikram Shiram, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Ajit Shiram, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Aditya Shiram, Deputy Managing Director, and Mr. Amit Agarwal, CFO of the company. We shall have remarks from Mr. Ajay Shiram and Mr. Vikram Shiram today. Members of the audience will get an opportunity to post their queries to the management following these comments during the interactive question and answer session. Before we commence, please note that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature, and a note to that effect has been included in the conference call invite that has been circulated earlier and is also available on the Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Mr. Ajay Shiram to give us a brief overview. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Siddharth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time to join us for our Q3 Financial Year 24 Earnings Conference Call. Here's wishing all of you a very healthy and happy 2024. I will share my thoughts on the business and industry dynamics, and then Vikram will share views on the financial and operating performance. The global context today is characterized by delayed economic recovery for major economies, rising geo. Ladies and gentlemen. The line for the management seems to have disconnected. Please stay with us while we reconnect with the management. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. We have uh, reconnected with the management. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Sorry for the disruption, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the central banks are grappling with the inflation, interest rates, and growth paradox. There are also deepening trends around climate change, generative artificial intelligence that have led many countries to look at policies around these concerns more aggressively. 2024 will also be a year of elections. 30 democracies, including three of the largest, which are India, US, and Indonesia, will go to the poll, accounting for about 46% of the global population and nearly 60% of the global GDP. This is likely to generate regulatory and policy uncertainty in the short and medium term. We as an organization are cognizant of these developments and keep preparing ourselves for possible eventualities. We have already taken conducive measures in terms of enlarging product portfolios as well as sustainability. <coughs> this is a key focus area for all our businesses and we will ensure that we keep growing along these lines. All our businesses continue to witness good growth except chlorovanile wherein we are witnessing price softening led by oversupply of caustic in India and imports of PVC into India. I will now discuss about the key industry dynamics across our various businesses. First is chemicals. Demand trends in major economies for key end-user industries that utilize chloralkali have been subdued, leading to a sharp decline in prices 
of Kotlik Soda in Q4 of the last year, post which the prices have remained low and raised far. U.S. has witnessed some capacity shutdowns in the last couple of years, and Europe is looking at reducing production amid lower demand. Demand continues to be low in China as well. However, they operated at a higher rate and exported surplus to contain fall in their domestic prices. The Indian scenario did not change much from last quarter and operated at lower capacities with sluggish demand growth and new capacity additions. We expect this scenario to continue for a couple of more quarters. We are cognizant of the imperative and a consistently matched capacity augmentation with efficiency initiatives. Our LED costs have come down and a new 120 megawatt power plant will further support lowering energy costs from Q4 financial year 24. The sourcing of green energy that started in June 23 is helping us in costs as well as in our endeavor towards sustainability. However, given the industry scenario, we expect the businesses to be under pressure for a few quarters. The other initiatives, ECH and H2O2 projects, are expected to come online in Q1 financial year 25, and expansion of process solar capacity is expected to be operational in the current quarter. These are aimed at making the overall business more resilient, more efficient, and more diversified in terms of the product range. Denials. High interest rates have meant that the housing sector continues to underperform in the major economies, including China, thereby impacting PVC demand and prices globally. The disruption of logistic clients in Panama Canal and the Red Sea may spurt the freight costs and increase prices in consuming countries. India is registering a healthy growth in demand, but the prices continue to be subdued due to excessive imports from China, and therefore the margins are negative for PVC, in spite of cost savings in terms of lower energy prices. Carbide prices have also declined, but margins continue to be positive, and we are maximizing carbide sales. Sugar. Globally, sugar demand and supply is expected to remain balanced, and this is supporting all sugar prices. Domestic sugar production estimates have been revised to 31 million metric tons, with impact of El Nino in Maharashtra and Karnataka. Sugarcane prices have been increased. The fair remunerated price by rupees 10 per quintal, and the Uttar Pradesh state administered price by rupees 20 per quintal. There is a significant gap in margins between Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh wells. Policy intervention will be required in this regard. Ethanol industry received two setbacks this year. Firstly, with central government restricting sugar diversion for ethanol production to, to 1.7 million metric tons, and secondly, Uttar Pradesh government increasing the country liquor obligation on molasses. The positive side was that the central government has increased the ethanol price by rupees 6.87 and rupees 5.79 per litre for sea heavy molasses and damaged corn based ethanol, respectively. In spite of this, we feel that feedstock availability with the distilleries will be challenged this year, and blending will see a decline from what 12% blending achieved this ethanol year. We feel that there is a need for consistency of direction from central government and state governments. We started our sugar operations in this quarter and have planned the majority of our operations on sea heavy routes. The crop is looking good so far. Our expansion initiatives at Loni and CBG projects are proceeding as per timeline. Our potash fertilizer project commissioned in January 2024. The CBG will, uh, as well as potash fertilizers, are part of our initiatives on sustainability through circular economy. Fenesta. Consistent measures to ensure to enhance the portfolio 
have translated into better performance metrics for this business. During the quarter, we have delivered healthy growth owing to increase in volumes and pricing. The, price, the trend remains positive and order bookings are also up at 9%. We have commissioned our fabrication unit for facades at the Hyderabad facility recently. We have also increased the UPVC extrusion capacity at Kota to enable growth and better service. Strategy-wise, we are accelerating presence in new territories and product categories, and this is translating into better performance. For the last few years, Canesta has become a significant contributor to our earnings. The agribusiness portfolio comprises of Ashina Farm Solutions, Fertilizers, and Bioseed Business. Ashina Farm Solutions have seen good growth, given better volumes in seeds, especially research wheat. The new varieties that we introduced for research wheat last year I received a positive response from the farmers as they are attuned for higher yields and enhanced heat tolerance. Our production facility for water-soluble fertilizers and biologicals under a subsidiary was commissioned during the quarter. Over the last few years, China Farm Solutions has become a significant contributor to our earnings. Fertilizers. Lower gas prices that is a pass through impacted both top line and profits. Also last year, we have received arrears on account of revision in energy norms. Subsidy outstanding as on December 31st, 2023, stood at a negative rupees 21 crores as compared to rupees 461 crores in the same period last year and rupees 310 crores as of March 31st, 2023. Bioseed. The business saw improvement in volumes both in India and Philippines. This is on the back of the new high-performing hybrids that have been introduced by us in corn, cotton, and vegetables. Our pipeline for the coming seasons remain attractive as our team is focused on developing newer and promising varieties. Frequency of economic volatility Degrees of climate and their impact on business have increased in the recent past and these have become a part of business. So India continues to show buoyancy in economic growth led by infrastructure development and investments across various industries. Some impact of these events cannot be ruled out in the coming year and we feel our investments directly to enhance sustainability, business mix and efficiency in operations will help us sail through these challenging times. We continue to have a healthy balance sheet, and this will support further growth initiatives. I'd like, now like to invite Vikram to cover the financial sector. Uh, Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I will now take you through the financial highlights of Q3 and nine months financial year 24 results. Net revenues for Q3 financial year 24 were at rupees 3,035 crores as compared to rupees 3,236 crores in Q3 financial year 23, a decline of 6% year on year. Revenues were impacted by prices in the chemicals, vinyl, and fertilizer segments. Growth for the drug quarter was driven by sugar. Sri Ram Farm Solutions and Finesta. PBDIT for Q3 financial year 24 was at rupees 480 crores as compared to 588 crores in Q3 financial year 23, a decline of 18% year on year. The revenues in chlorovinyl segment declined 31% year on year to rupees 663 crores and PBDIT was at rupees 56 crores as against 237 crores in the last year. The chemical segment reported revenues of rupees 535 crores, a decline of 29% year on year. ECU prices were lower by 40% year on year, which were partially compensated by caustic volumes being higher by 6% year on year. 
DBDIT declined 71% to 63 crores. However, hydrogen sales along with lower energy costs have helped to mitigate this to some extent. The vinyl business noted a decline in revenue of rupees 37, 37% year on year at rupees 128 crores, mainly on account of decline in prices and volumes of PVC by 12% and 29% respectively, and lower carbide prices and volumes by 20% and 16% respectively. Volumes declined on account of partial shutdown in Q3. PBDIT was at negative rupees 7 crores as compared to rupees 19 crores, subdued, uh, led by subdued prices of PVC and carbide, as well as volumes. However, this was partially offset by lower energy and carbon costs. Sugar statement revenue, net of excise duty, was at rupees 891 crores and increased 22% year on year due to higher volumes and prices in both sugar and ethanol businesses. Domestic sugar volumes were up 24% year on year at 14.7 lakh quintals due to higher domestic releases, although last year there were exports of 2.3 lakh quintals in the same period. Volume of ethanol was at 349 lakh liters versus 231 lakh liters, supported by the commissioning of the 120 KLD multi-feed distillery. EBDIT came in higher at Rs. 188 crores as against Rs. 102 crores, led by better prices and lower costs versus the same period last year. Ogen volumes from the expanded capacities at Alvapur were also higher. Revenues of Finesta building systems increased by 20% year-on-year to Rs. 214 crores, and PBDIT grew by 8% to Rs. 43 crores, largely on account of higher volumes and prices. The order book was up by 8, 9%. Shiram Farm Solutions revenues grew 17% year-on-year at Rs. 596 crores as compared to Rs. 512 crores last year. The, seg the segment saw higher volumes and prices in seeds, especially research wheat. PBDIT for the quarter came in at Rs. 180 crores as against 143 crores, a growth of 26% year on year due to higher volumes and margins in research wheat. Segment revenues of fertilizers declined by 36% year-on-year at Rs. 418 crores, and PBDIT declined by 72% year-on-year at Rs. 26 crores, attributed to lower gas prices, which is a pass-through. This led to lower energy savings rate and hence impacted the earnings. Also, in the previous year, Q3 saw a one-time positive impact of Rs. 49 crore due to revision of energy norms of the earlier period. The bioseed segment saw a revenue increase of 29% year-on-year at Rs. 138 crores. This was primarily led by domestic revenue increase by 29% year-on-year at Rs. 95.5 crores due to higher volumes. The international revenues increased by 30.8% year-on-year at 42.2 crores owing to higher volumes in the Philippines. The bioseed business is improving and is expected to reach near break even in the current financial year. For the nine months, December 31st, uh, 2023, revenues net of excise duty were at rupees 8,523 crores, reporting a marginal decline of 3% year on year. This was mainly on account of lower prices in segments of chemicals, vinyls, and fertilizers, which saw lower ECU, PVC carbide, and gas prices. Our business segments of sugar, which was aided by the commissioning of the 120 KLD distillery, Penesta, SFS, and fertilizers, saw higher volumes year to date. Accordingly, the PBDIT is at Rs. 800 crores a decline of 41% as compared to Rs. 1,354 crores last year. The company's net debt 
is at Rs. 314 crores as on December 31, 2023, as against Rs. 681 crores as on March 31, 2023. Return on capital employed for December 23 came in lower at 16% as compared to 27% for the financial year 2023 due to the reasons mentioned above. In summary, our balance performance is anchored on a diversified portfolio, commitment to smart investments and sustainability, and a strong financial foundation, as can be seen by our balance sheet and cash flows. As we embrace the future-ready mindset with a focused approach on growth, we are strategically positioning ourselves for long-term viability and growth in the evolving new business segments also. This brings me to the end of my remarks and I would like to request the moderator to please open the forum for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. Okay. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parth Mehta from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you. Uh, thank you for giving my question. Uh, I just have two questions. Uh, first is on caustic uh, soda volumes, which uh, in the presentation it shows that there has been a uh, flat Flattish growth uh, for nine months in cost of today. Thinking out for the reason why the volumes have remained flat. Okay, and the second question. And second one is on uh, epichlorohydrin, uh, the new capacity that is coming up. So uh, one of our competitors is also adding new capacity. So wanted to know if uh, what is the demand supply scenario and would that lead to any oversupply uh, in the uh, industry? Okay. Uh, yes. I am just answering your first question uh, on caustic soda volumes. Uh, so actually, our new capacity is yet to be commissioned. Uh, so the volumes are so with the same capacity as was there in the previous year. So we have marginally moved up on the sales from the existing capacity. And uh, this quarter we will be commissioning the new capacity. And after that the volumes would see would see an increase. Uh, with regards to your second question on uh, ethyclorohydrin, uh, you're right. Uh, there is uh, one other player who has uh, commissioned capacity, and we would be the second one commissioning capacity uh, in this space. Uh, there, there is, I think with all products and chemicals, we are seeing a growth in demand in parallel. So we do expect that uh, in the coming quarters, as we ramp up our capacity gradually, uh, the material would be absorbed in the market and we'll be exploring markets uh, all over, whether it's domestic or international as well. So we do expect that in the coming quarters, uh, this capacity would get absorbed. Okay, and uh, thank you so much for this uh, answer. Just one more on uh, ECH. What would be the payback period for our uh, CAPEX? And how much CAPEX have we done in ECH? Yeah, uh, so the uh, payback should be in the range of around uh, four to five years, five years ballpark. Yeah, and uh, the CAPEX will be in the range of around 500 to 600 crores. I don't have the exact number right now, but that should be the range. Okay. And, and, and the capex in uh, caustic soda new capacity that we are coming up with, and what would be the capacity size? Yeah, so uh, the capacity there is about 850 tons per day, and there is also a flicker plant of about 600 tons per day. Put together, the capex is uh, again in the range of around 800 to 900 crores. Oh, sorry, I uh, missed out the number. Of, you said 50 tons per day. 850 tons per day. Okay, okay, 850. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Pratik Thoria from Systematics. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on good sort numbers, especially in your sugar, agri, and pellets. And I think even uh, your, your chemical has uh, sequentially uh, done better. So, so just uh, firstly on chemicals uh, on your. Uh, so, what was the ECU realization for the month of January? I mean, uh, uh, average price during January. Average price for January, Pratik. Uh, the average prices are around twenty five thousand five hundred. Okay, and sir, uh, this is ECU level. So, chlorine is uh, still negative. Chlorine is still negative. And that could be how much? Around four thousand, three to four thousand. Okay, sure. And sir, what is the you know uh, slightly medium to longer term view on the uh, on the caustic demand front because of the overcapacity that you are seeing? So, how do you uh, by when do you expect the entire uh, capacities to get fully absorbed? And uh, you know, then we we can expect the prices to go up. Uh, yes, you are right that uh, in the short term uh, we are seeing an increase in supply uh, and demand, as we've already said earlier in the call, uh, has been uh, subdued. Uh, but we put up capacities with a long term horizon, and we do expect that in the coming quarters, uh, uh, with the robust demand demand for a country like India across sectors. That this capacity will get absorbed. Uh, so it's hard to put an exact time timeline or a price uh, uh, in, in the future, and we normally don't give forward-looking statements. Uh, but we expect that with our chlorine integration as well that we are focusing on, that this capacity will get absorbed and running fully in the next financial year. That is FY26. It will be full. Understood. I'll just add. I'll just add that, as mentioned by Amit earlier, we are also installing a 600 tons per day breaker plant. So that gives us the flexibility for exports. That opens up another value uh, avenue of selling our products uh, if the pricing is suitable. Sure, awesome. Uh, and just secondly, uh, could you should just uh, share some. Uh, you know details on your agri business because I see your agri is in exceptionally well uh, in a kind of a challenging quarter because most of the other companies that are reporting numbers, especially as the you know agrochemical seeds uh, uh, front, are including a top line degrowth while margins for most of them have uh, you know been better. But you uh, reported a healthy top line growth as well. So you know if you could just share something on the product uh, you know details or even on new. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in our farm solutions vertical, we have uh, you know, our farm solution segment. We have three verticals: the crop care, plant nutrition, and uh, seeds. Now, crop care and plant nutrition have been flat in terms of top line, and bottom line also is largely flat. And for the reasons that you just mentioned, that the industry is going through a rough patch. But our seeds vertical has done exceptionally well, and uh, December quarter Q3 is also rabi season, where the wheat seed, the research wheat uh, seed, where we are market leaders, that is sold and that is done exceptionally well. So that is the key reason for the growth that you've seen for this uh, segment in this quarter. Sure, sir. And so then, what could, uh, what can we expect uh, going forward the trajectory in terms of uh, for the upcoming uh, Kharif season? So as I mentioned, the, so uh, in Kharif also there should be growth is what we are expecting uh, across the verticals. We are seeing this. So I mean, I mean, so say in terms of uh, any product launches that we are anticipating for the Kharif, which can add to further growth. Uh, or this is just. Yeah. yeah, there are launches which are uh, lined up, but you know these launches take time to mature. So it would not happen that we launch in this financial year and immediately we see uh, they take time to mature. 
and in the past whatever launches we have made they are contributing about 10 to 20% of the top line are coming from the launches we have done in last two years so it takes time to pick up uh so this business will overall as a as we mentioned the past will grow at about 15% cagr so we do expect that and the tech and also uh, uh, as a pivot so this business is the manufacturing where in uh, in non nutrition we have started manufacturing which will mature over a period of maybe about 1 to 2 years and also in uh, crop care where uh, last year we started our own manufacturing So I think these are all steps to help the business grow. Sure, sir. Uh, that's very helpful. Uh, thank, thank you so much for asking my questions, and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Ria Mehta from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, sorry to interrupt ma'am but the line for you is not very clear hello am i audible this is better ma'am please go ahead yes uh yeah my first question is in terms of cost take uh, so we are seeing increase in textiles and uh, so basically textile segment which forms a huge part of demand for cost take has increased so uh, what do we have to do? I'm sorry, we we can't we can't understand what you're saying, ma'am. Hello. Line is yeah, now it's better. Now please please carry on. The textile demand the and the. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Ria. Once again, the line for you is uh, bad. I request you to please move to an area with better network. Riya Mehta, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I'm on the line. Yes. Sir. Is it better? Uh, yes. Please go ahead. Uh. With the textile demand going up, how is the cost margin going? Uh, really, January and onwards. But the line again for you is going bad. May I request you to uh, please get into a better network area and return to the queue? Ah, uh, sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will proceed with the next question, which is from the line of Subhankar Ojha from SKS Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A couple of them I have. Uh, So with respect to this uh, new power plant that you said 120 megawatt that got that is likely to get commission into quarter four. So how much of cost saving will come uh, uh, from this? Uh, that's one. Secondly, uh, this caustics water plant which is uh, going to get commission in quarter four. Uh, what are the other uh, 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 capex basically uh, which will probably come in uh, uh, in 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 quarter four or H125? uh that second and third what will be our uh, capex for 25 okay yeah uh yeah so uh, answering your first question in terms of savings from uh, p120 uh that should be in the range of around 10 to 12 crores a month that's the kind of uh, you know once it gets commissioned and is fully operational so so that's point number 1 uh second in terms of capex uh, as we mentioned that uh, our uh, t120 and uh, uh, the the it's ttbd that will get commission in this quarter and ech h2o2 will get commission in the next quarter okay okay and uh, and the capex that is uh, announced for 25 Yeah, that uh, we haven't announced any new capex as of now. So whatever was already. Announced. Yeah, whatever already announced is what we are completing, and then okay. let's see if there is anything new that comes up in the board meeting next week. How much of this is pending out of the announced capex? So majority of it is spent, uh, Swankar, because we are nearing completion. 
So about uh, 70, 80 percent has already been spent in terms of cash outflow for these cases. So this net debt figure of 314 uh, December end not likely to go up much from here. 300 and uh, I, I think the December end uh, net debt figure is 314, 314. See, net debt will go up. So by March, I'm expecting the net debt to be around. 1900 to 2000 crores and the reason for that uh, three key reasons uh, one this is the sugar season so therefore debt goes up as the inventory for sugar builds up okay. Okay. point number two is uh, is uh, the urea subsidy which is really abnormal right now it is negative 20 which means we have to pay so if you know there are certain certain notifications which are pending there if they come, then probably there will be outflow of about 360 crores there. So that will add up. And obviously there will be some outflow on CapEx as well. Okay. 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 And uh, with respect to your business outlook for Finista, I mean, uh, can you say some outlook? I mean, I can understand that the order book has gone up this quarter by some 9%. Uh, can you throw some more color on the same business with respect to the, uh, the prospect of this? Question. Throw some more light on the Finesta business. Finesta business, yeah. Yeah. Broadly, uh, broadly speaking, uh, the Finesta business was established and has a long history and is the market leader in UPVC windows and doors. The aluminium windows and doors were established or launched about 18 months ago and have gained good traction and uh, uh, are uh, moving at a fast speed. And I think the order book has exceeded over 100 crores in a pretty quick period. Uh, as far as the third new business, which is the facade business, that has just been launched. So in fact, now it is the first launch, pre, uh, sort of post-launch uh, trial facades that are being put up for builders or on their buildings. We've got orders for those trial facades. So the process is in the facade business, you put trials first and then you get the approvals of the technical specs and then you get the commercials and then you get the orders. It's a bit of a longer gestation, but that's the nature of the, the business cycle of facades. So the facade business will really uh, take off maybe in terms of uh, meaning, uh, some, some meaningful volumes maybe 9 to 12 months from now. Because till then it will be market seeding and development. You okay. first put up the factory, then you put up the trials, then you put up the, the get the approvals of the product at the customer end and then you get the orders. Right. right. All right, so thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Ria Mehta from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Hope my line is clear now. Uh, yeah. My first question is in terms of uh, the caustic demand. So a big part of the user industry, 20-25% is the textile. And we are seeing a revival in the textile industry. So, what's your outlook on the demand for the caustic uh, front? So, uh, yes, the textile industry is one of the drivers uh, uh, for caustic demand. Uh, I think it will be slightly lower than the range that you had mentioned, but yes, it is one of the important uh, drivers for demand. Uh, so, the the advantage with caustic actually is that there's a multiple multiple industries which lead to the demand. So even if one of the industries is slightly down, the other industry, consuming industry, uh, can support. Uh, so we do expect that in the medium term, the demand will grow and will be robust. And in the long term, it is likely to come back fully. So we expect the next one or two quarters to be tight, but we are optimistic that uh, going forward after that, that there will be a good demand. All right. And in terms of the overall capacity situation which we are looking at, what kind of growth supply are we looking at? Pardon me, what sort of oversupply? 
Yeah, so I think a lot of our competitors have also come up with capacity with Gujarat Alkali also having spare capacity. Uh, there is a lot of uh, supply in the market. Hmm. So th- th- that's right. The supply, there has been a significant increase in supply and it will be going from 5.6 uh, million tons per annum to approximately 6.7 million tons per annum. So we are seeing uh, a significant increase in supply in, in the short term. Uh, one of the key factors with caustic is usually chlorine. Uh, so evacuation of chlorine is often a constraint as well. So we are working actively on plans to uh, uh, integrate there and mitigate the impact of that. So we expect that it will take some time for our capacity utilization, therefore, to ramp up. Uh, so FY25, it will ramp up gradually, but FY26 onwards, we expect it to be uh, robust. So our incremental 350 TPD plants, which will come up in maybe say the quarter end, uh, by when do we expect to uh, have a capacity utilization uh, as compared to 80%, 75-80% like uh, the current company's utilization level? 75-80% capacity utilization. I think uh, see the project uh, which comes up in this quarter, in FY25, the utilization should be around 50%. And FY26 is when it should reach the levels of 75-80%. And by end of that year, we should be around 90%. Go ahead. So it will take two years to fully ramp, up, ramp it up. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, for a 600 TPD caustic live project, that would also have similar uh, ramping up uh, frequency? That's the 600 TPD flicker plant. So that's like a subset. So you have a 850 TPD coming up. 600 TPD doesn't add to the capacity. It's only a subset. It, it drives the liquid flakes, uh, liquid light. Okay. That gives us flexibility, as Jamin mentioned. It gives flexibility to export, and uh, it's, it becomes an SKU. Got it. Also, you're seeing a lot of uh, Chinese players dumping PVC uh, into our market. So, currently, what is the situation in January, and uh, do we see any improvement? Also, uh, exports from India for PVC has reduced because of the Red Sea crisis. So, is there a kind of a glut and uh, what is the scenario there? Yeah, so uh, in PVC, see the, the issue is the imports coming from China, where also the anti-dumping duty was removed about a year, year and a half back. So, uh, although the demand is very robust in the country, there is oversupply because of imports. And uh, unless we have, you know, the demand getting uh, improvement, seeing improvement in China as well as in the Western world, the the prices are expected to, you know, remain in that range where they are right now. Uh, do we export PVC and caustic and how is that being for us? So, PVC from India is generally not exported because uh, Indian manufacturers only meet about 45% of the demand and 55% is imported. As far as caustic is concerned, we do try to verify, although the quantities are lower, the information is mentioned in our investor presentation that there are exports uh, happening uh, uh, from country, from the country for caustic soda. But have they reduced considering if we were exporting to European regions and there is issues in the logistics sector? Yes. Yes. They have marginally come off in the nine months period. So what would that number be if I want to see YOI? So if you look at, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, nine months, uh, our exports uh, as a country or as an industry were about 2.98 uh, lakh metric tons versus 3.08 lakh metric tons. Got it. And uh, my second question is in terms of sugar. So, uh, with the new, sorry, I missed the question. I think uh, earlier participants had asked, what would be the capacity with the 120 KLD coming in? Incremental. Yeah. So, our uh, total sugar capacity is uh, now about close to 550, 570 KLD. 
It's an all the best. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, that would be. Uh, and how much of that would be grain based? Uh, one twenty. Two fifty now, sir. Two fifty is grain based now. Uh, two fifty is grain based. Are we looking at uh, feedstock like for that? Pardon me. Maize, maize. Uh, our competitors are looking taking uh, grain based from uh, maize, etc. So are we also kind of looking at alternative feedstock? Yes. But they are low, uh, lesser in profitability. So, uh, what would be a major uh, for us in grain maize? So we are looking at, as I said, we are looking at both rice and maize, and the margins are more or less the same in both the products. Oh, oh, got it. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, no, I was just talking in terms of biofeed. What's the overall uh, outlook? So uh, for biofeed, uh, as was mentioned in the vice chairman's speech, that uh, we are expecting uh, it to, you know, break even or near break even in this financial year. So over last two years, if you see the business is seeing improvement based on you know the new products introduced in the market. And uh, better marketing activities as well. So we do expect the trend to continue, and uh, you know we are working actively on certain uh, research uh, uh, things as well. So we do expect it to improve, but that improvement will be gradual. Got it. And with the decrease in fertilizer prices, do we expect losses anytime soon? No, there would not be any losses in our fertilizer business. The reduction in revenue, as we mentioned, is because the gas prices came down significantly, from about twenty-four dollars last year for MMBTU to about uh, fifteen, sixteen dollars per MMBTU uh, in the current quarter. So, which gets reflected in the revenue and has some impact on profitability as well. But we don't see any losses in this business in the near future. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Hello. Saket Kapoor, your line has been unmuted. You may proceed with your question. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Sir, firstly, if you could give the import number uh, for caustic uh, soda for the quarter. And uh, also for the nine months, also net of export, if if that number you can give. So, uh, Sakit, those numbers are mentioned on the investor presentation okay. that is there on our website as well as on the stock exchange. Okay, the import numbers. So I'll I'll go through them. Sir, how are the user industry faring currently? How are the consumption rate uh, from the user industry for this quarter? And what's what's the trend going going ahead? Uh, so the user industry is diverse uh, for caustic. It includes textiles, paper and pulp, alumina, uh, other chemicals, etc., dyes, etc. Uh, so the the growth rates of each of these uh, industries vary. Uh, in the short term, like what we've seen for many chemicals, not just caustic, there has been a, a reduction, or not a reduction, a slowdown in the growth in demand. But we expect that in the coming quarters, uh, the demand is going to pick up, and uh, therefore the demand overall for caustic uh, will be robust. Okay. So, if we take the current realization, the ECU realization, sir, uh, how profitable are uh, the, the global companies also, and and our company and, and domestic companies also? So, where is the break-even point from where which uh, uh, things start turning worse? 
going uh, what forward but going net where uh, if you could give throw some light on the same so saket uh, see break even point is a is a itself a very volatile number because it depends on what the costs are and energy cost being the biggest contributor it all depends where the coal uh, costs are moving right? so i don't think it's feasible to give a number on break even uh, price uh and therefore how other globally whether they are profitable or not it's very difficult i mean our business has been uh, profitable as you can see from the numbers and uh, but yes the profitability has been low uh, it has come off significantly from last year uh, so let's see how it pans out it will be a function of uh, costs and prices although we have worked on costs so our variable costs have come off but prices have declined more hmm right sir and sir on the utilization levels sir uh, uh, i think so uh, if, what what have been the utilization levels for us for this quarter and q1 q2 how the utilization levels were around 80% uh, satish okay 80% is for q3 what was the number for q2 and 9 months it will be around that level 80 to 90% range what we been operating Okay, and we will be expecting to exit the next quarter also in the same vicinity. Yeah, I think there is. We should be at this level in the Q4 as well. And for the vinyl segment, sir, uh, how are the utilization levels current currently? So currently, they are close to about 90 to 100 percent. Sorry. Right, sir. So, uh, and for the last point is on the uh, the the capacity uh, that we are going to augment uh, in this quarter. Uh, 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 when uh, you have explained, I think so, how the ramp up will happen. So, wh- what should be the ramp up for the next year and also for the co- this quarter? What kind of uh, okay. uh, capitalization will happen for Q4? So, I think that is what uh, uh, Mr. Ajay Shyam had explained. that the utilization levels will be peaking by end of fy26 right thank you sir and all the best sir. thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 if you wish to ask a question the next question is from the line of riya mehta from equitas investments please go ahead uh thank you or uh, just to follow up what would be our current cost of power for us considering we have so much we uh, built a captive power in so many years uh we we generally don't share our cost of power and uh, but as a as i mentioned it's been coming down with the lower coal prices as well as uh, with the with the the green power that we started sourcing in q2 And with the 120 megawatt coming up, uh, it should further decline. Now, uh, what would be the quantum of decline if you could just uh, quantify with the new capacity coming of 120 megawatt? Uh, uh, yeah, for 10 to 12 crores will be the saving on account of uh, 120 megawatt uh, coming on on power. 10 to 12 crores saving. A month. A month. For a month, right? Okay. And uh, in terms of coal prices, uh, how much are we importing, and how much do we have uh, with coal in India? So uh, for Baruch plant, we largely import. Uh, but again, it's very dynamic area. We we actually try to follow whatever the pollution control guidelines are. So in Baruch, it's a mix of import, and there are certain other substitutes that we try and see to reduce costs. we also use biomass uh, similarly at our kota factory also uh, where the coal is primarily domestic uh, but there also a large component is biomass large component has become biomass. about 14 15% uh, at at kota is biomass in terms of energy uh, are we seeing a decrease in coal prices in the imported coal yeah we are seeing a declining <laughs> Oh, got it. Thank you so much. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Navneet, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I have uh, three questions. First, your new caustic plant of 300 TPD, uh, in terms of annual capacity, that will be about 100,000 uh, uh, tons, right? Uh, just I wanted to reconfirm my maths. This is which plant? Uh, the new caustic uh, capacity, which is coming up uh, this quarter. So the, the capacity of a new plant uh, is 850 tons per day, which is approximately 300,000 tons per annum. Okay, and uh, you mentioned uh, the overall industry is increasing from 5.6 to 6.7 million tons in India, the supply. Uh, so beyond that, uh, what are the new capacities that have been announced over the next uh, two, three years? Uh, these are the capacities that we are aware of at this point in time. Uh, beyond this, uh, we don't have any clear uh, announcements. And as they come in the public domain, uh, we'll be aware of them. And it takes approximately two, two and a half years to set up a new capacity uh, like it took for you. Yeah, it depends on uh, case to case, but it, it can take uh, up to three years also depending on land acquisition, environment clearance, and then execution. Okay, uh, got that. Thank you. Uh, my second question is on your uh, capital allocation in your presentation. You mentioned that you're looking for uh, more opportunities, especially in the chemical segment uh, for, uh, you know, fresh projects. So um, uh, what type of chemicals are you looking at? Would it be, uh, you know, uh, commodity chemicals or similar stuff that you're already in or uh, less cyclical uh, commodities? What uh, What's the thought process over there? Okay. So, as, as, as you would be aware, uh, we are expanding our core, which is caustic soda chlorine. We are also expanding a couple of uh, adjacent feeds, which is epichlorohydrin and hydrogen peroxide. Both those plants are expected to be commissioned in Q1 FY25. Uh, and over time, we are always exploring uh, opportunities across the spectrum, whether it is in a commodity chemicals or uh, intermediate chemicals or even specialty chemicals. So we are continuously evaluating opportunities, uh, and uh, uh, and as the board approves, uh, we will we will approve them, and specifically also exploring opportunities linked to future sunrise sectors, including green chemicals, uh, etc. So we are exploring uh, all these opportunities. Okay, so bulk of your uh, fresh projects are expected in the chemical division only, right, in terms of capital allocation, as in bulk of capital deployed. Uh, that's what was mentioned in the presentation as well, rather than the other divisions. See, uh, for us, the capital-intensive businesses are two, chemicals and sugar. Uh, and the other two growth businesses, which is farm solutions and finesta, are not so capital-intensive. And therefore, majority of the capital allocation will happen in chemicals, uh, followed by sugar. Uh, okay, fair enough. Thank you so much. Uh, that was all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Bell, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening. Check, uh, uh, whether you have any plans of uh, demerging and listing separately the Finista and the uh, Sriram Farm Solutions business, given that both the businesses have become sizable and uh, significant, as you mentioned in the presentation as well. So, board will take uh, view at the appropriate time. As of now, uh, we have not had any discussion with the board on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no further questions. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation in today's call. Navigating a challenging global business environment, our domestic landscape remains a beacon of positivity. Despite the business challenges, we are diligently implementing efficiency enhancement and sustainability initiatives within our operational framework. Acknowledging the pivotal role of driving efficiencies across diverse business segments, we are confident in our ability 
deliver a robust overall performance over the medium term. Through strategic re resilience and our commitment to adaptability, we are well positioned not only to navigate the really challenges, but also to capitalize on emerging opportunities in the dynamic business landscape. Thank you very much once again. Goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of DCM Sriram Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.